Our first and only presentation is the <coughs> Kerry 150 History Moment by Councilmember Yara. Thank you very much, Mayor. Tonight's topic is Kerry Mayors. You would think this would be an easy topic to research. Surely there has to be a complete and a definitive list of all of Kerry Mayors over the 150 years. Would you not think that? Not the case, however. Why? Well, first, there was a huge fire in 1908 in which most of our town records were destroyed. And then in 1937, the article on the right, our town clerk, our police chief, and our mayor himself suddenly resigned. And at the same time, more town records and meeting minutes suddenly disappeared. Coincidence, perhaps, but one way or the other, we had to reconstruct things as best we could from newspaper articles mm -hmm. and the like. Thanks especially to Matthew Champagne of the Page Walker staff, Cary historian Carla Michaels, and of course our own Virginia Johnson for their work in doing this. And of course the use of a round and about Cary for its detailed information. And before I forget, please visit Cary150.org, you see the address there at the bottom, for the latest information on Cary's 150th anniversary. And especially tune in to Facebook or YouTube at 8 p.m. on April 3rd. That's 8 p.m. on April 3rd, the actual date of Carrie's birthday for a very special birthday celebration. So, guess how many mayors Carrie had in 150 years? What do you guess? 30. Close, 30 is close. 36, <laughs> an average of just slightly over four years per mayor. <laughs> But don't worry, I'm not going to talk about all 36 tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just selecting a few. But you have to start with Frank Page, Carrie's founder. We talked about Frank a few months ago, so suffice it to say tonight, he was Carrie's first developer, first builder, first real estate agent, first entrepreneur, first postmaster, and on and on. And of course, he was Carrie's first mayor, serving from 1871 to 1872. And you'll notice he was mayor for just one year. One of his most important tasks during that year as mayor was to organize Cary's first municipal election, which is represented by the drawing on the right. And that election took place in May of 1872. And the winner was, da da da, Rufus Jones. Rufus was the son of Henry and Nancy Jones and grew up in and perhaps was born in the Nancy Jones house on Chapel Hill Road. Huh. Yes, it's still on Chapel Hill Road. <laughs> He bought Cary lot number one from real estate agent Frank Page in 1960, 1869 and was one of the town's first commissioners. Council members were called commissioners in those days. He served in the North Carolina General Assembly. He donated much of the land for Hillcrest Cemetery and along with his two daughters bought Cary Academy from Frank Page where his two daughters taught for many years. He was universally regarded as Cary's most esteemed citizen. He served as mayor for one two-year term. Another mayor from the 1800s was Robert Harrison. He started the Harrison Plow Company where he patented five farm implements. He then founded the Harrison Wagon Works at the corner of Chatham and Harrison, where else? One of the county's largest employers. In his spare time, he is said to have invented wireless radio, but Marconi beat him to a patent. Upon retirement, he opened Uncle Bob's Corner, which was a popular cafe on the current location of Ashworth's Drugstore. There's a historic marker at Chatham and Harrison in his honor today. Then there was Henry Jordan, pictured on the left. He arrived in Cary in March of 1871 with his wife and children just a few weeks before Cary was incorporated. Henry served as one of the original commissioners and established a long line of Jordans in Cary. Henry's grandson, George, pictured on the right, was mayor in the 1920s. And George's grandson is the George Jordan many of us know today. And some of us also know C.Y. Jordan, the family's current patriarch. Then we had J.M. Templeton, Jr. He was the son of Cary's beloved doctor, J.M. Templeton, Sr. With a law degree from Duke, he served on the Wake County Board of Education. He was Cary Town Attorney. He was president of the Bank of Cary and mayor at a very early age. He donated the land for the Cary Farm Life School, the barn of which still exists today. Despite all of this, he found himself in financial difficulties. 
failing to pay back money he had borrowed from the town. Why the town lent him money to start with, I don't know. And accused of financial malfeasance, even though many of the charges were later dismissed. His financial problems were not the only financial problems here at that time, however. The 1920s and 1930s were turbulent times in Cary. Guess how many mayors we had between 1920 and 1937? Five. More than five. Ooh. We had 15 mayors. What? I really. <laughs> Looks like everyone wanted the job and no one wanted to keep it. <laughs> A radio station in New Jersey offered New Jersey surplus political candidates to carry. We didn't want them. The town actually declared bankruptcy in 1932. But stability was restored with the election of Robert Mayton in 1937. Robert and his wife, Ruth, moved to Cary from Virginia in 1925. Self-educated, he was superintendent of the physical plan of North Carolina State University in Raleigh, and he earned the trust of Cary citizens and served as mayor for 10 years, longer than his seven predecessors put together. He's a worthy namesake for the Maiden Inn. In 1949, H. Waldo Rood was elected mayor, a school teacher and engineer his maternal grandfather was Carey's first physician, Dr. Waldo. During his term as mayor, Carey's population tripled. As mayor, Rood initiated the use of building permits, zoning, construction standards, and street numbers on houses and businesses. It's hard to believe we didn't have any of these things before the 1950s. He also advocated for a change from strong mayor commissioner form of government to a town manager council form, similar to what we have today. So the next time you're driving down Waldo Rood Boulevard, remember that we owe a lot to Mayor Rood. Next is Mayor Fred Bond. Born in Georgia, he and his wife Phyllis, who is Harold Weinbrecht's aunt, by the way, moved to Cary in 1952. <clears throat> he served on the council from 1965 until he was elected mayor in 71. Cary's population tripled again during his mayorship, and his accomplishments were many. He initiated Cary's first comprehensive land use plan, which estimated an unheard of ultimate build out of 50,000 people. He started the use of planned unit developments. He opened the first greenway and initiated the first townwide beautification program. He was known for his humility, preferring to be called Fred rather than mayor. If a citizen complained about snow removal, guess who was out there with a shovel? And of course, he's the namesake for Bond Park. You can read a lot about Mayor Bond, oh, excuse me, about Fred in Around <laughs> and About Cary. Out-of-towners and very new Cary residents who attend Coca Booth Amphitheater are surprised to learn that there really is a person named Coca Booth. But those of us who know him will never forget him. Mayor Bur Booth served on the council for nine years before being elected mayor in 1987. He was born in West Virginia and moved to Cary with his job at Aeroglide Corporation. The Booth administration saw the build of Cary's modern water treatment plant, the new train station, sign ordinance, the restoration of the Page Walker Arts and History Center, and the rapid growth of the park system. Coca loved and promoted the Cary High School Band. And if Coca said, let's do something, it got done. He remains one of Cary's most beloved citizens. And that's it for tonight. Oh, um, wait a minute, there's one more mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Here is someone who needs no introduction, and I'm not going into detail on Harold's accomplishments. Oh, wow. One day they're going to fill up an entire chapter in the history of Cary. I just want to mention one thing. Notice the date, 2007. This means Harold is in his 14th year as mayor, which means that he has served longer than any other mayor in Cary's history, and counting. So to conclude tonight's history moment, and as part of our sesquicentennial celebration, we would like to recognize this accomplishment with an appropriate plaque. And let's all congratulate Harold. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank oh. you. I'm, I'm honored and speechless. <laughs> hey, Mary, turn this way. Please. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the mask makes it great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow, now I got to go read tonight's, read over tonight's. Now you got to be mayor. Yeah, you gotta now, be mayor. now I got to be mayor. All right. 
Let's see. Now, see, pull myself together and uh, go to our next item, which is thank you, by the way, Mr. Yarhoff.